back to my YouTube channel, Olivia here with Olivia's Romantic Home, and in today's video I cannot wait to share with you is DIY Dollar Tree Spring and Easter Decor Crafts. So you guys, we are doing a ton of DIYs on my channel for Spring and Easter. I will link them down below if you guys need some inspiration, but in today's video I'm going to take some of those inexpensive Dollar Tree items and make them boutique gorgeous on a budget. So without further ado, you guys, plug in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint, and let's get to crafting. In today's video, I'm going to share with you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create this really adorable garden wheelbarrow planter using items from the Dollar Tree. After we create the wheelbarrow garden planter, I'm also going to share with you all how to create this beautiful spring Easter floral arrangement. You can also change out the seasonal decor. So this is going to be a great little wheelbarrow garden planter, especially if you love to decorate with kind of that farmhouse style. I'm going to create kind of a French farmhouse floral for for the inside. Of course, you guys can customize this to fit whatever kind of decor you love and how you're decorating for spring or Easter or into the rest of the holidays. So get ready, plug in those glue guns. This is going to be a fun one. The supplies for this project are one of those Dollar Tree garden planters. I went ahead and painted mine white in advance for this project. And so you guys can use the Dollar Tree craft paint or you could use spray paint, whatever floats your boat and whatever you have on hand. And then I'm also using one empty ribbon roll and this Somebody Loves You sign. This part is optional. Also your hot glue gun, some craft knife and also some popsicle sticks. So to get started, you're going to take your garden planter and you're going to cut two little notches in the back part of the planter. You're going to cut them the size of a popsicle stick. So these are the smaller popsicle sticks. They come in a packet at the Dollar Tree and I'm just using my craft knife to poke a hole into the bottom part of the planter. Now you guys can see that it takes a couple of tries to get the hole poked and then I also go ahead and flip it over and continue to kind of cut and wiggle that craft knife around. Now if kids if you're doing this please have your parents help you with this part because the little um, part that you're poking through where the metal is on this can be a bit sharp so be very careful. Um, and so you're just going to go ahead and poke two holes. This is going to be where the back part of our wheel barrow popsicle sticks are going to go through. Again, I did have to kind of wiggle it around to get it cut, but it wasn't too hard. And then you can kind of test it out to see if your popsicle sticks will poke through. Now we're going to the front of our planter. So this is the other side. This is going to be the front part of our wheelbarrow. And you're going to cut two little notches in the front of this. And I kind of spaced them apart because this is where we're going to connect our wheel to. Now I cut mine sideways, but I do advise you to cut upwards if you can, because this made a little bit of an extra step where I had to glue extra popsicle sticks on to make the wheels hold on there. So once you have your holes cut for your back part and your popsicle sticks for your front, you're going to take your little empty spool for your wheel and you're going to cut out the center. So if you use Dollar Tree um, ribbon spool, there's no ribbon left on this. I just took the ribbon off. Um, there should be a hole already in the center kind of that you can feel. So you'll just need to take your craft knife or you can use scissors for this and then cut the hole out. So I just kind of wiggled this around and continued to cut until I felt like I got a decent little hole. And I did this in the front and then I flipped it over and did it on the other side so I could kind of make myself a wheel. Now I will suggest to after I get done with this project it might help if you guys reinforced your wheel by cutting another strip of cardboard to put around it. I did notice that my wheel was just a little bit flimsy so if you guys want it to be a little bit more sturdy um, definitely try to reinforce it with some more cardboard. And then next my daughter is going to help me with this craft project and so we are just going to paint all these popsicle sticks with the Apple Barrel craft paint. This is just a black. You could also do brown if you wanted your handles to appear more wooden, which is kind of what I did in the end. <laughs> then I'll show you guys that. So I am painting the wheel with the black Apple Barrel craft paint. I did paint all the way on the front part of the wheel and then on the inside part of the cardboard. 
And then I went ahead and also helped her paint the little craft sticks. This was a bit of a tedious process. And I did think that I was going to make two of these, but it took me all day to make one. So I just went with two. And you can see she helped me. Her hands got all painted. And I love her thumbs up. I had no idea she did this, but it was really cute. Okay, so once you have your craft sticks painted and then give them a bit to dry, you can go ahead and poke them in. And this is what's going to make the back part of your wheelbarrow. So you're poking in two on each side. So we poked two on one side and then we're turning it around and we're poking two on the other side. And so get them poked in about the same length because you want it to kind of stand up evenly. And then you're going to take your hot glue gun and you're just going to glue your little craft sticks together. So you're going to add a dab of hot glue and then I held mine for just a minute or two and they seem to hot glue pretty good together. If you wanted to reinforce it even more, you could use some E6000, but I just use hot glue for mine. And again, I felt like they held together fairly well. So then once I had the legs to the back of my wheelbarrow glued together, I'm just going in with the little handles for the front and I'm pushing them through the front. And then I'm taking two little popsicle sticks that I cut in half and I'm making spokes for my wheels. You guys could definitely get more detailed and be creative with this part. I wanted my spokes to be rather large so the popsicle sticks could kind of fit on there. And you can see too where the paint is showing through. I didn't put on my second coat of paint until I after I got everything put together because I didn't want it to rub off while I was assembling the piece. Again, you guys could go ahead and do this how you choose. And now I'm just adding a little dab of glue to each end of the popsicle stick. And then when I glue the center spoke of my wheel on, I'm just adding one glue bob to the center and then now I have my darling little wheel. <laughs> I think this is coming out really really cute. It looks just a little bit rough right now but I promise you guys this is going to come together really adorable. So now that I have that done I did go ahead and push my little popsicle sticks further down because it seems that my wheel was a little bit too far out and then I have the little popsicle sticks on either end that I glued the opposite direction because I did have to glue them on because of the way that I put the original popsicle handle sticks on. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, basically glue your popsicle sticks on <laughs> to the front part for your wheel. in and poking holes in the back of my planter and this is going to be for my wheelbarrow handles. Now I kind of wish that I had done this at the beginning so if you guys can remember to poke your holes in for your wheelbarrow handles ahead of time go ahead and do that and I just poked them on the end as you can see because I wanted my handles to stick out like it was a wheel, real wheelbarrow and now I'm just trimming off this little piece of tin from that Dollar Tree bunny sign because I wanted to add some tin to the legs of my little wheelbarrow because I did notice that um a real wheelbarrow would have like metal legs right here. Again, this part is definitely optional. I just went for this extra step because I had that extra tin from that sign on hand. So I'm just hot gluing it to my little popsicle sticks on the base. And then I decided to go ahead and add some black paint to this. I didn't want to completely cover up the paint. So I do go back in and wipe a little bit of paint off with a paper towel. But I am just going in with that black craft paint. Again, I wanted this to appear kind of like vintage, kind of farmhousey, like it really was being used outside. I know how my wheelbarrow looks and it looks kind of aged, so I wanted some of that metal to kind of poke through. And then I'm also going along the bottom part of my wheelbarrow and I do paint a rather thick line here. Um, because if you had like a regular wheelbarrow, this would part would be metal as well in and along the bottom part, depending on what kind of wheelbarrow you have. Actually, there's so many different kinds of wheelbarrows, whether it be 
you know, um, a metal wheelbarrow or a wooden wheelbarrow, just whatever floats your boat. Have fun making a gorgeous garden planter wheelbarrow. And now I'm going back over my wheels with some black paint. I went in and around the outside on the front part and the back side. And then I also touched up the little spots in and around the top part of my planner. So I'm just taking my paintbrush with just a dab of black craft paint and I'm going in and along the top. This doesn't have to be perfect because a wheelbarrow that's being used and a little bit aged doesn't have to be perfect. Now, I had originally painted this white and then distressed the front with a bit of sandpaper. I did decide to replace my wheelbarrow handles, the black ones, with some wooden ones. So I'm using some of that Dollar Tree contact paper that I had left over from another project, and I'm wrapping two popsicle sticks with the brown craft paper or contact paper I'm sorry um because I wanted it to appear like I had wooden handles on my wheelbarrow this is definitely an optional step and I was actually just going to use some brown craft paint but I remembered that I had saved <laughs> little craft hoarder I am I had saved some wood contact paper so I'm just using that and now I'm trimming off the edges So now I'm just replacing the black handles with the wooden ones. It did bunch up just a little bit where I poked the handles in, but I still thought it came out rather adorable. Now I'm taking one of those Dollar Tree brown wooden tower blocks and I'm hot gluing it to the front part of my wheelbarrow. This part is also optional. I did have these blocks left over from another project. I just thought it made it look kind of more wheelbarrow-y. <laughs> Definitely that's not a word, but anywho. Okay, so if you guys are like me and you're normally hauling around weeds and brush in your wheelbarrow, here is how you may want it to look if you're not going to do an over-the-top floral. Of course, you guys know me and I have to go super extra, so I'm definitely going to go for a floral. Now, I tried to do part of this floral arrangement outside of my wheelbarrow because I didn't want to be constantly pressing down with my little um, front wheel being a bit... Um, delicate let's say that so anyway I went ahead and added some greenery and Dollar Tree does carry some really nice greenery this time of year and then I'm adding in some of those Dollar Tree little Gerber daisies and I think this is coming out super adorable again you guys can stop here I wanted to add a little bit of color to this making it a very French farmhouse piece I'm using it as my centerpiece so I'm adding in some Dollar Tree lilacs and also a little bit of Dollar Tree lavender now I'm going in with one of those Dollar Tree Easter signs and I'm cutting off the little Easter bunny part. I'm using three shish kebabs and a piece of green felt. What I want to do is make a floral pick with this Easter bunny um, sign to put inside of my Dollar Tree floral garden wheelbarrow. So I'm adding hot glue to the back. I have those three shish kebabs. Um, added to the base and then I'm hot gluing a generous amount and then adding my little green felt on to the back and that is going to create a really nice floral pick and this is just a little tip if you guys are doing a floral arrangement this is a really great way to pick in a wooden sign or just whatever your heart desires to add to your floral I'm adding in that little vintage tack detail to the top again this step is completely optional I had actually not planned to add in this Easter sign but I couldn't resist getting super extra and so I had also popped over to the thrift store and found this really adorable ribbon for a quarter each and I'm using some of that Dollar Tree wired ribbon this is the chevron pattern with the burlap and I'm creating Olivia bow so you just take your loops and wrap it over on itself I'm doing two loops for the base bow and then you crease it in the center you're going to take your scissors and cut a little notch now remember cut a, just a very tiny notch and this is what we're going to use to attach the bows together with your pipe cleaner so take a pipe cleaner and attach your bow and give it a good twist 
now you can go ahead and fluff your bow if you choose. I love using wired ribbon because it really helps you fluff your bow. And then I'm going to do a triple layered Olivia bow right here. You guys use whatever you have on hand and customize this to whatever colors you love, but you're just going to loop it over on itself again. This time I did three loops. And then again, you're going to fold it in half and then cut a little notch in the center. Remember a tiny bitty notch, otherwise your bow will fall apart. The notches help you guys fluff your bows. And then I did add some of that lime green ribbon with another Olivia bow to the back and some lime green ribbon to the front. My camera died, so I apologize. I didn't show you guys that part. And the way that I attached the bow to the little bunny sign was just with a pipe cleaner. And then I popped that bunny sign into the top part of my floral. And voila, here it is. It is so fantastic. My mom came over and she really raved on this project. She was really impressed. She really loves garden stuff. So she thought this was super adorable and very creative. And I was actually pretty excited myself. I really wanted something fantastic for the centerpiece for my table that just spelled out spring and Easter together. And I think this little project definitely nailed it. You guys comment and let me know if you're inspired to try something like this. I am really loving how it came out. And then also remember, you guys can just leave it very minimal with the brown grass or green grass. You can go with a couple of flowers or you can go crazy and make a giant arrangement at the top. Next, I'm going to make be making a pipe cleaner bunny. So first I am looping around the ear and then I'm twisting it so it's secure. Then I'm just gonna repeat, repeat it. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to loop it over the top and bring it back down. And then I'm going to make a little circle for the head. This one's going to be a little bit smaller than the body. And then we're going to loop the pipe cleaner through the circle two times so that it's back down at the bottom so we can make the body. So now I'm going to loop the, the end of the pipe cleaner around back to the head and wrap it around the bottom of the head. Now we're going to make two little bows for the bunnies and so the first one I'm going to be hot gluing in between the ears and the head so it looks like it's got a cute little bow on top of its head. And the next bow I'm going to be gluing in between the head and the body and so it's a cute little boy, yeah, and then I'm going to be sticking him into the, by the cakes on this cute old stand that my mom. A huge thank you to my daughter for joining me in this crafting session today with helping me paint and also creating these adorable little bunnies to go in with my fake cakes. And speaking of fake cakes, if you guys want to find where I buy my fake cakes, I buy them from Rhonda's Rose Cottage Designs. She does the most amazing designs. Her prices are really reasonable. Her work is so detailed and perfect. I know you guys are going to love her. And I hope you all are having fun with these spring crafts. Again, I have a ton of spring spring and Easter DIYs that I will link down below. You guys are amazing. Thank you for all of your love and support. I read all of your comments and you guys just mean the world to me. So thank you all so much for joining me on this crafting adventure. So many of you have commented that I'm inspiring you to get to crafting again. I want to encourage you guys to go for it. Crafting is so good for the soul. Plus it's so fun to make your home super cute. Again, you guys could do a small project or a big project. Don't worry about it being perfect. Just go for it. So if you guys are new, I would love to have you subscribe and be part of my YouTube family. Thank you all so much and we will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.